Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Dorothy, professional astrologer. You can find me on the web at nhastrologer.com. I still have a cold. My voice isn't cooperating, so bear with me. So, come to my website, check things out. Today I want to, and I'm just kind of got to hold the camera today, because um, it's my phone, because my camera's still broke. Talk about the week of December 5th to December 11th, all right? So on December 5th, we wake up in the morning, if you wake up early enough, with the moon in the sign of Aquarius. Now that moon in Aquarius is all about being very intellectual and intellectualizing our emotions. But, you know, it's going to go void, of course, at like 623 in the morning. So even if you're awake that early, we're not going to really be able to use this moon for much. And all day long, the moon will be void of course. It basically means we just kind of like we'll coast. So whatever we're working on at 6.23 in the morning, what are you going to be working on, right? So whatever's going on for the day, the day's just kind of going to coast through. It's going to be not an easy day because by the time the moon does move into the sign of Pisces, it's not till 11.30 at night. So the whole day, you know what? Take the day off because there isn't a whole lot that we're going to be able to do. But then again, if we are out holiday shopping, this is a day when if marketers are paying attention, they're going to have deals on electronics. And we're going to feel like purchasing electronics. So if you feel like it, you know what? Then the moon is having its way with you. So on Tuesday, December 6th, with that moon in Pisces makes a connection to Mercury and a connection to Neptune. This is rather foggy. So, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do with this type of energy that's really concrete or grounded. So basically what we need to do here is just to trust our intuition and allow things just to move the way they're moving. All right. But if we can tap into our intuition, that's really a great way to use this energy mm -hmm. and a way to really work with, uh, if you're having some hard, a hard time with anything, the best way to use this energy is to uh, play music to help you move through it. The other aspect which is going on all day long is Mars is an Aquarius, sextile Uranus and Aries. That means they're in each other's zodiac sign. Technical term for this in the astrology world is mutual reception. That means they are hanging out with each other and they get each other's vibe, man. You know, they, Mars and Uranus, when they're together, they create a lot of movement and a lot of activity. This is a very easy aspect, but since they're so both, they're both really electrified, right? Uranus is very electrifying and Mars is very independent in Aquarius. So we really are feeling the energy of this in a super positive way. Another reason to go out and buy electronics, another reason for the marketers to be paying attention, right? If you can tap into just a little bit of that higher thinking, that Aquarian energy between Mars and Uranus, you're going to have a really active day in coming up with new ideas, new thoughts, new wavelengths, new patterns. See what you can do with that energy. Okay? Excellent. Okay, so on the 7th, the moon in Pisces still void of course at nine in the morning the, the last aspect it makes is a square to Saturn and so when the moon in Pisces it's like all over the place knows no boundaries isn't interested in being grounded whatsoever but with that aspect to Saturn Saturn wants us to work hard it wants us to have boundaries so the square aspect between the two is real is, is this could actually be rather difficult uh, they are both mutable signs but Saturn and the moon in a square like that just are not interested in working together. So what we really get with this is we get, I want to just be all spacey and just relax and go do this, but we also have somebody harping at us, or even our own in our own minds, somebody harping on us to get the work done. But since the moon's void, of course, at nine in the morning, that means that last aspect of Saturn is the, the last energy that we get to, it's the only thing we have momentum with. Um, and the moon will be void, of course, until the next day, until December 8th. Um, at 5.15 in the morning. So, we got a whole day on Wednesday, like hump day. is going to be a real big pain in people's butts because the boss is going to want us to do stuff and we're going to feel very unmotivated. But again, if you can tap into your higher self, you can tap into that higher energy, then that might actually help. Put on some music. That moon in Pisces is really wonderful like that. So put on some music, listen to something. That might help motivate you through the day in whatever it is that your chores and your things are. We also have on that day is uh, Venus. I actually didn't look up the time. At 9.51 in the morning, Venus um, moves into the sign of Aquarius. 
So when Venus is in Aquarius, this is very unconventional. Well, our values will go through some type of uh, shift, right? We're right in the middle of uh, Christmas shopping season and Hanukkah shopping season for most. And uh, so when Venus is in Aquarius, we're looking for a le some level of financial independence, financial freedom. We're looking for freedom in relationships. But the reason I mentioned shopping is just because this is an opportunity to actually we're going to probably be a little focused on a lot of electronics and also look for those bargains, look for those deals, because I think our, the people who do marketing, if they're tapping into what's trending and just what feels right, they're going to recognize that with Venus and Aquarius, we are looking for the masses. We are looking for electronics because Aquarius rules electronics. So that's some of the way we can do this. And just on a really personal note, let your freak flag fly. Be the unique you that you want to be. Don't worry about what other people think. Venus will be in Aquarius for three and a half weeks. It's not necessarily her favorite place, but there she can put on her weird clothes or something that she's always wanted to wear out and not give a shit about what anybody thinks. So have fun with this Venus in Aquarius. It can be used in many, many different ways, as I've just mentioned. All right, so December 8th, what we got on that, Thursday, December 8th, the biggest energy, actually, let me grab my ephemeris. I didn't really look this one up much. On December 8th, the biggest energy really is just that the moon enters the sign of Aries. And that, of course, that moon in Aries is all about being independent and taking action. So we've had an awful lot of Pisces energy recently, these last few days. But Mars in Aquarius, Uranus in Aries, Venus in Aquarius now, it's given us a lot of uh, motivation, even though we felt like not doing much of anything. So the moon in Aries is now, yay, let's get started. I want to do this. And that moon in Aries energy is all about motivating others and even ourselves to initiate projects. This is a perfect time to do it. On December 9th, with the moon in Aries, it's going to make a whole bunch of aspects because we have a lot of planets that are cardinal right now. So it's going to square Pluto. You've heard this stuff before. Makes a trine to the sun. That's cool because we're in the first, the second quarter of the moon cycle. Opposite Jupiter, trine Saturn, conjunct Uranus. Oh, don't, don't, don't glaze over yet. I'm going to tell you what it means. Hold on. And then uh, the moon will sextile Mars. All of this between eight in the morning, eight fifty a.m., eight o six p.m. The first thing of the day is moon Pluto. So we're going to wake up intense. It's intense. We want to take action and we want to make a big change. That Aries energy, right? It's just like, look at me, look at how much I'm doing. I'm going to change everything. And, but in all reality, changing a few things. Not a lot. You're just initiating action, which begins the process of transformation, which is Pluto, what Pluto's looking for. That trine aspect to the sun means that our hopes and dreams and wishes from that new moon energy is still growing. You should start to see some of the things that you uh, focused on during that new moon. What day was that? I don't remember. Shame on me. The new moon in Sag on the 29th of November. All right. Now, we also have the moon in opposition to Jupiter at noontime, middle of the day. That moon opposite Jupiter is fantastic for one-to-one -one relationships and legal partnerships. So if you have some legal work that needs to be done, today's a great day to go and say, this is what I want, this is what I need, how do we get it done? All right. Then the trying to Saturn is a short, remember these things are all with just a few hour transits. The trying to Saturn is about stabilizing, it's a trying, it's an easier aspect in the square, stabilizing the things that we think we want to bring into our lives, okay? Sagittarius, Saturn, and Sag. Now, the sun, uh, the moon conjunct Uranus on that day too, 424. This is feisty energy, so this is going to end the day with a big bang of independence because we could just, you know, some of us, if we're not, if we're not happy with what's going on in our lives, right, just flip the boss off and tell him where to go. But if you want to be a little more innovative than that, you can use the energy for innovation too, for new ideas. And let's end with that sextile to Mars, and that is at 8 p.m. Oh, no, <coughs> here comes my coffin to 8 p.m., that is, that's not bad. Actually, that energy is just represented of, we're not going to be able to calm down a whole lot. Great night to go shopping if you're out and about on a Friday night. Or to go out and socialize, because that Aquarius energy, where, the, where Mars is, is very social. The Sun and uh, Jupiter are sextile all day long. And that is an opportunity here to 
uh, really increase what the ego was looking for. The moon in Aries is very egotistical, very ego-related, and the sun making a sextile to Jupiter is going to inflate the ego as well. So when we go out shopping today, or if we're thinking of other people, or we're doing projects, we really are going to be focused on what is it that I need, what's going to make me look good. And sometimes that's okay, all right? But if it gets too big, like Leo too big, because the sun rules Leo, and Jupiter and the sun are opposite. And so this could be a big opportunity for Leos to really show their stuff and show off and have a great time doing it, right? Good for you guys. So on December 10th, the moon enters the sign of Taurus at 7, what time is it? 7.41 a.m. East Coast. Just before that, the sun and Saturn are conjunct, right? In Sagittarius. So Saturday is a great day to plan your holiday traveling. I mean, if you're going really far, you probably should have planned a plane ticket way before now. But if you're driving somewhere or there is some last-minute holiday travel planning to be made, the Sun and Saturn conjunct in Sag is a great day to do it. Now we also have the Moon in Taurus, like I just said, at 7.41 a.m. It will be in Taurus the rest of the weekend. So with that Moon in Taurus, we value things. We value what is beautiful. So when we go shopping this weekend, we're going to buy things that are really, really beautiful to us. It will be an it will be the weekend if you know we're looking for bargains. We probably hopefully we can find bargains too because that moon in Taurus has no problem spending money if it's something that they want. But if it isn't and there's a great deal to be had, they'll have that too. All right. So this is what the whole weekend is like. Saturday is better than Sunday if you're going to go shopping. And Sunday has some harder aspects, but Saturday looks fantastic to go out to shop to buy the things that you think are beautiful, the things that you want for you and for your loved ones. Now, this is also a wonderful opportunity all weekend to do some beauty routine, um, buy beauty products, go to a spa, get your nails done, do your hair, something that's going to make you feel really wonderful, especially if you feel you need it. This is an opportunity for that. Now, one more thing about the weekend, that moon in the sign of Taurus is also fabulous for going out to dinner. But if you're busy shopping and you're not eating properly and you get overly hungry, it can make you kind of crabby. So, and this is kind of the influence that we all will feel a little bit over the weekend. So go out to dinner. So this is a great weekend to really treat yourself. You're going to go away. You're going to figure out on how you're going to go on a trip. You're going to go shopping for the really expensive, beautiful things that you love. And you're going to eat well. And you're going to give yourself a spa treatment. So, who wants to buy me that? <laughs> I'll take that weekend. Actually, I'm working at Circles of Wisdom on December 10th. So come in and see me in person. And you can spend your money in a store and buy all kinds of great gifts. Just a thought. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. Thanks for putting up with this awful cold of mine. I'm the one putting up with it. You're not putting up with anything, right? You just have to hear me cough a little bit. Thank you very much. Please come to my website, nhastrologer.com. Join my email newsletter list. One person every month gets, a, I pick one person every month, yes, for a 20-minute reading, free 20-minute reading. Share this video wherever you find it, and amongst those who share, a person wins a 20-minute reading, okay? So thank you very much. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. There'll be a button in one of these locations. I believe it will be over here. Thank you very much, and uh, blessings, and uh, send me some energy for healing. I would love that. Thank you. Namaste.